Ahoy there, mateys. Today we're diving into the murky waters of Pirates, a movie that tries to be Pirates of the Caribbean, but ends up somewhere between Treasure Island and your uncle's dodgy VHS collection. We begin with a quiet scene aboard a ship where Manuel and his wife, Isabella, are having a cozy moment, a break from all that piratey chaos. They're talking about their future, love, and, you know, the fact that Manuel is holding on to a massive secret. Captain Victor Stagnetti and his merry band of cutthroats storm in like the worst party guests ever. Manuel is taken and poor Isabella tossed into the sea, so much for date night. Enter Captain Edward Reynolds, a man who, quite frankly, seems more fit to run a tobacco plantation than a pirate ship, because that's exactly what he almost did. The fact that he doesn't know how to sail is, well, let's just call it an oversight. His first mate, Jules, would do just about anything to keep the crew happy. She's the glue that holds this mismatched group together, always finding a way to keep morale high, if you know what I mean. And what a crew it is, a ragtag bunch of misfits who'd probably be more at home in a tavern than on a ship. Led by Reynolds, or rather Jules, they're a band of sailors who can barely tell the difference between port and starboard. As fate would have it, they fish Isabella out of the water, where she delivers the terrible news. Her husband Manuel has been taken by the evil pirate Victor Stagnetti, who's after a mystical knife. And because they really don't have anything better to do, Reynolds decides to set sail for the Island of Shadows. Why not, right? As the crew continues to search for Manuel, things go completely off the rails. Isabella, minding her own business, is suddenly captured by pirates. But instead of terrifying her, they treat her like a guest at some bizarre pirate birthday party. A woman forced upon her some tendering love. It almost seems like she's enjoying herself Wu tries to stage a rescue, but honestly, why stop a good party? She's eventually freed, though no one, especially Wu, understands how or why. Victor Stagnetti's first mate is having a bit of a moral crisis. Jules pretends to be a priest to get a handle on Serena's crisis of conscience. Jules, for her part, listens patiently, possibly wondering how she ended up in this situation and whether there's an exit strategy that doesn't involve getting stabbed. Turns out Manuel Venezuela, Isabella's husband, isn't just your average prisoner. No, he's a descendant of some ancient protector family. His lineage is the key to the powerful staff Victor's after. The inevitable moment when a scorned lover and his ex cross paths, and where better for it to happen than a grimy tavern? Jules walks in and wouldn't you know it, Marco just happens to be there. But instead of a simple, hello, Marco goes straight for the dramatic. I suppose you're here to pick up the broken pieces of my heart and blaming that scrapbook in my suffering, he says, as if this pirate adventure has somehow turned into his personal therapy session. Jules, of course, isn't having it. She's got bigger problems than Marco's emotional scrapbooking, like the fact that there's a pirate battle brewing just outside the door. Jules, ever the realist, probably wonders if there's a polite way to excuse herself from this melodrama. After all, it's hard to take someone seriously when they're talking about heartbreak while the world is literally falling apart around them. But Marco isn't here for a friendly chat after he finds out about Reynolds. He's jealous and wants revenge, so naturally he ties up Jules and Reynolds and almost burns them alive. Classic overreaction. Luckily, a mysterious woman from Reynolds's past comes swooping in to save the day. Well, sort of. She offers to free them if Reynolds will, and I quote, spend a wild, intimate moment with her. Yep, that's her condition for not letting them burn. Reynolds agrees, because what else is he going to do? But once they're freed, the tables turn and Reynolds ties her to a tree. Honestly, this movie is one long game of people tying each other up. Victor isn't just after some knife, he wants the staff of power that Manuel's family has been protecting for generations. The knife is just step one in this convoluted treasure hunt. And while all this is going on, Serena's causing trouble. She's stirring up a mutiny and at one point forces Victor to, let's say, prove his leadership in a way that's less piratey and more compromising. Now, if you thought things were ridiculous before, wait until the final act. 
Victor Stagnetti, after all this time chasing that mystical scepter, finally gets his hands on it. And like any pirate with a magic scepter would do, he uses it to summon an army of skeletons. Because, of course, it's always skeletons. Why is it never something more creative, like flying monkeys or talking parrots? Captain Reynolds and his crew have to fight their way through the skeletal army. But here's the twist. During the chaos, Victor, ever the backstabbing villain, betrays Serena. Poor Serena, who had been loyal to him all this time, suddenly finds herself on the wrong end of his pirate power trip. This betrayal is a last straw, and Serena decides to switch sides. And just like that, the tides turn. The battle rages on, and Reynolds and his crew make a desperate run for the beach to escape. As they set sail, a fierce cannon fight ensues. Stagnetti's ship is seemingly destroyed. In the exchange, though, weirdly, the scepter is never seen again in all this chaos. Did it sink? Did someone pocket it? We'll never know, and neither will anyone else, because the movie never bothers to show us. So, after being betrayed by Victor and watching her entire pirate career crumble, Serena has a bit of a change of heart, and, as it turns out, a change of orientation. In the midst of all the chaos, she cozies up to Jules, because after surviving skeletons and pirate betrayals, what else is there to do? Jules, never one to miss an opportunity, seems to be on board with this new direction. Is it love? Is it a convenient fling? Who knows? What we do know is that the two women share a tender moment, which is quite the pivot from the pirate mutiny we were all expecting. Maybe it's Serena who changed her heart, or maybe it's Jules who swayed her. Either way, by the end of the movie, they found some kind of comfort in each other's company. And there you have it, folks, a pirate movie where the captain can't sail. The first mate is running a secret therapy session and skeletons pop out of nowhere. Oh, and don't forget the tender moments between pirate enemies, because apparently skeletons and magical scepters are great icebreakers. Now, you might be wondering what makes pirates special. Well, besides the fact that it somehow made it to completion without anyone asking, should we really be doing this? The movie won 11 AVN awards. That's right, 11. And not just for the absurdity of the plot, Evan Stone took home Best Actor, and Janine Lindemulder won Best Actress. So despite everything, this movie wasn't just made, it was celebrated. And that's kind of the magic of Pirates. Even in the most nonsensical adventures, there's something undeniably entertaining. And in the end, isn't that what we're all here for? Thank you for joining us on this nostalgic journey. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.